Hello, welcome to this video. This is ECE 3025. I'll have a series of uh, videos here introducing the course topics. Um, this is electromagnetics. And this first video, I'm going to take you through uh, the topics of the course and uh, why it's interesting and worth covering in a course. So we've basically got five sections to this course, not all equally length. Uh, but the first two are going to cover something called a transmission line. A transmission line you can think of as a more complicated way to describe wires, right? Wires that carry voltage and current from one place to another. Uh, and we're going to sort of dive into what actually these transmission lines are. And it sounds something simple like diving into a wire. Uh, but as we're going to get into, there's actually a lot of really important implications to this on circuit design. And there's two aspects of this that we're going to tackle. The first is DC voltages. And we'll be primarily considering with instantaneous changes of voltage or current on a transmission line or on you know pairs of wires that, that, uh, that connect things. Uh, and that's going to be very important for any sort of digital logic, digital circuitry, integrated circuit boards with digital components on them, uh, since those consist of lots of fast rises and fast falls. Uh, and that's uh, actually very critical toward the proper design of uh, digital systems is understanding the, uh, um, the wires that connect everything as actual transmission lines. Uh, effectively, what that means is that it takes a finite time for signals to get from point A to point B. Nothing travels instantaneously. And there's a lot of implications that come from that, uh, that single fact. The second section is on AC voltages. And in that part, we'll be considering uh, sinusoidally varying voltages and currents. And that's going to be very important for things like the power grid or for radar systems. Uh, lots of applications where there is a single frequency that's dominating everything. Uh, and the phenomenon that pop out from that assumption will be quite different from that of digital logic. And so we'll be uh, carrying that as a separate section. After that, we'll be done with transmission lines. But the reason why we're starting with transmission lines is that we're going to uh, recast the idea of two wires that connect, you know, a, let's say a battery to a, to a light bulb. We're going to recast that not as voltages and currents, but actually as electric fields and magnetic fields or electromagnetic phenomenon that simply manifest as voltages and current. In order to rebuild that, we have to sort of start over and rebuild the physics of how electric fields uh, result from charges, uh, what is current, how magnetic fields result, and how, they, how electric fields and magnetic fields relate to each other. And once we've rebuilt that understanding, we'll then be able to describe what's an electromagnetic wave, which is electric fields and magnetic fields would create each other. And we'll be able to sort of connect that back to transmission lines and understand the simple idea of a couple of wires as actually an electromagnetic phenomenon, which has lots of very important implications. So what are we doing here? Some of you are probably wondering, hey, didn't we cover this in my freshman physics class? Why are we redoing electromagnetics? And what's this got to do with electrical engineering? Why do I have to bother with this in order to build circuits? Well, good question. Let me see if I can answer that. And of course, we have, we have 15 weeks to answer it, but um, let me get a couple points out of the way in this uh, first lecture video. So there is a lot within electrical engineering that we cannot build if we do not build this understanding from the ground up of electromagnetics, including the power grid, right? The power grid, we can start off by treating it as lots of long wires that connect voltages and currents. But as we're going to find out, it's a lot more complicated than that. Uh, and a lot of this comes from the fact that you cannot instantaneously transmit information from point A to point B. And the implication of that will be surprisingly broad in how you might design the power grid, for example. Uh, what else can you do with electromagnetics? Well, our, our whole notion of uh, semiconductors and you know, transistors, which underlie kind of any, any computer, any digital component, you know, any uh, um, semiconductor electronics, uh, we can start off in your earlier circuits class and your semiconductor classes as understanding you know doping of semiconductors and it builds up charges and all that and um, excess charge but what's really happening is actually an interaction between electromagnetic fields and matter and that is critically important to understand any of how this works and so to dive at a deeper level we need to understand how electromagnetic fields electric and magnetic fields interact with materials particularly the materials that make up semiconductors, but really any material. And so that also is an important aspect of electromagnetics that is crucial for huge swaths of engineering. 
Uh, this is a radar. If you've ever taken off from the airport, you might have seen this little orange sucker on the, on the left here. It may be spinning around. It spins around about 12 times per minute. And this is actually the primary radar that's used by the air traffic controllers uh, to sort of see where airplanes are and talk to them at the same time. Uh, and so obviously the way these radars work is by broadcasting radio waves and waiting for reflections to come back off of airplanes, but also off of, let's say, clouds and rainstorms or birds or anything else that can reflect radio waves. Uh, and so obviously this takes a very uh, you know, exact understanding of electromagnetics in order to understand and build these systems. And we'll be trying to piece some of that together. How do the radio waves that are emitted from these radar systems, how do they work? On the right, by the way, is a special kind of radar called a synthetic aperture radar. What you're seeing looks like it's a camera image, but it's actually not. It's actually a, a radar derived image. What's neat about this, is you can actually take this through a cloud and you can still see um, very fine detail of what's underneath. So actually what you're seeing is the US Capitol building, for example, and you can see the fine detail of trees and even some branches. So it's pretty remarkable capability. Again, all comes from a detailed understanding of how radio waves propagate and how they interact with matter, including the ground, including buildings and trees and all those phenomena. All that is uh, um, you know, core to understanding how these systems would work. Cell phones, needless to say, uh, are fundamentally antenna and uh, broadcasting devices and we need e &M to understand how they work. Uh, satellites, uh, this is an example of a satellite, but uh, these days satellites basically underlie um, so much of what we do as a society, starting off with GPS, uh, GPS is not only used for driving directions to get you to where you want to go, it's also the world's clock, which means it powers the internet, it powers financial transactions, it powers um, uh, the power grid, all of which rely on having a common time source, and we use GPS satellites to do that. And again, without electromagnetics, we cannot really make this system work and understand the phenomenon um, that underlie all of this. Uh, autonomous cars, this is a, a very hot and emerging area um, where, you know, cars loaded with sensors, be they cameras or, you know, radars and lidars, uh, can sense their surroundings and therefore adapt and drive uh, perhaps more safely than humans, hopefully at some point, um, if not already. Uh, but obviously, a core aspect of this is electromagnetic remote sensing. Again, that's there's that radar-like approach. You broadcast signals, you wait for them to return, and you have to piece together what is around you as a result, not just what, where things are, but how are they moving? Um, how big are the objects? Piecing together all that information, again, comes down to understanding e &M. Uh, This is a fiber optic cable, which is the primary way that the internet connectivity around the world is built today. Um, there are these uh, very thick underground cables that literally connect the internet in Europe to the internet in the, in the US. And, there's a bunch of these around the world, and it's actual physical cables like this laying under the sea um, that make all of this work that we, you know, take for granted as the internet. Right now, um, you know, these cables, they, you know, we talk about them as voltages and current, right? I put a voltage on one side, it's a long wire, and then I pick it up on the other end. But what they really are is guides of electromagnetic waves. They are creating voltage, they are creating um, electric fields and magnetic fields. And the voltage and current is simply the way that manifests on the wire. So again, without an understanding of electromagnetics, we can't understand how these cables work and therefore can't piece together reliable engineered systems like the internet. Um, these are a couple of pictures of magnetic levitation trains, which is also kind of a neat phenomenon. Um, just putting this out there, just to sort of broaden your horizons on the number of applications of ENM. Um, which are probably you know, larger than the ones you may have expected coming into this class. These are pictures of circuit boards. I talked about the notion of um, each of these individual wires on these circuit boards or an integrated circuit as being um, ways to carry waves. Voltage and current are really waves that goes from point A to point B, not instantaneously. And again, you can't piece together that understanding without fundamental electromagnetics at the core. So my answer to the question, what are we doing here? Didn't we already cover this in freshman physics? Well, we're gonna, number one, focus more on applications, why an engineer would care about electromagnetics, why it relates to um, all these engineered systems that we build and how they actually work. 
And what does this have to do with the rest of EE? Well, my answer is it's pretty much all of ECE is built off of this. You can't have a wire without electromagnetics, at least not a wire that does anything. Um, and it's a lot easier to abstract up to more complicated um, uh, applications once you've got this foundation. So that's what we're trying to do in this course. We are trying to build that foundation that is so critical for lots of uh, important applications. So this course, um, let me just start out with uh, uh, kind of a mental exercise to get you in the mood for what we're going to do. Uh, this is a simple, seemingly ultra simple circuit, right? You've got a battery um, connected to, you got a little switch right here. You can push down the switch and it will link up these two wires and form a complete circuit. And the battery is just connected to this little light bulb. The light bulb is also a resistor. So it's burning some power and emitting some light. Super simple circuit, right? And you probably know what to do. You, you figure out what the resistance of uh, that, that uh, light bulb is, you know, take the voltage, divide it by that resistance, that's a current. You get some sense of power from all that, easy, right? But let me ask you this question, right? Because there's a little guy that you might've heard of named Albert Einstein that would have something to say about this. And uh, in particular, the special theory of relativity, which you take a look at a problem like this and you say, hey, wait a minute. Um, what Einstein basically told us is that information cannot travel faster than a set maximum speed, uh, essentially this, the speed of light. It's three times 10 to the eighth meters per second approximately. So we've got some distance between the light bulb and the battery. It's not a big distance, but it's a distance and it's measurable, right? So it may take some amount of time for information to travel back and forth between the two. So the question I want you to ask yourself is the moment you touch that switch and you close it, how does the battery know that there is a light bulb there? And moreover, how does a light bulb know that there's a battery getting ready to give it power? Right, there's a phenomenon, right? There's a, there's a fundamental disconnect here because you cannot just immediately establish that current and have it going in a circle. There has to be a process by which the battery sort of learns that there's a light bulb there and responds accordingly. And vice versa, the way the, the light bulb learns that suddenly there's a voltage coming from this battery and responds accordingly. That is not an instantaneous process. It's a fast process, but it's not instantaneous. And if you think about um, as we push to faster and faster speeds on digital circuits, and so you move to a gigahertz, right? And now you've got a gigahertz means you've got a pulse or a square wave up and down happening every nanosecond, right? A nanosecond is not a lot of time, and you can't propagate things very far in a nanosecond at the speed of light. Uh, I think that's about 30 centimeters, right? And if you go to 10 gigahertz now, it's three centimeters, right? So you get the idea. Even if something is a few centimeters apart, by the time they get into gigahertz, that's a substantial separation, right? Which basically means um, the battery and the light bulb are a couple of clock cycles away from each other. So the answer to the question, how do the battery and the light bulb learn about each other is to forget about the idea of a wire and to start thinking about this as a transmission line, a way to conduct the information from one back to the other. And that's what we're going to be considering for essentially the first 40 to 50% of class. So we've got 34 modules here that will go through all this material. The first eight are called transient signals on transmission lines. And there'll be a set of eight lectures that will describe the DC pulses that go on transmission lines and how they propagate and how they work. Uh, then we'll consider time harmonic signals on transmission lines. Those again are the, um, the AC sinusoidally varying signals. Uh, then we sort of reset and press the button on let's learn our electromagnetics. Uh, and the first 10 modules of the fields and waves will cover electricity. This will to some extent be a review of what you may have covered in your freshman physics class, but it will be a little bit faster and will be a focus on applications um, and on the way engineers apply, excuse me, apply these uh, concepts, not on the details of how you solve triple integrals, for example. So we're going to be taking a different approach. Uh, then we're going to connect that to magnetism, which is the magnetic field side of things. We've got um, four modules on that. And then finally, we cap it off with fields and waves um, and dynamics of electricity and magnetism. And so that's when things get really interesting when we understand how a radio wave works and the beginnings of how it interacts with materials and reflects. So that'll conclude this uh, um, opening lecture here. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a lot out of this. Um, again, this will underlie so much of what we do in, in electrical engineering. 
And so uh, I hope you find this inspiring and enlightening.